It's truly a Christmas tragedy in the world of space exploration. The historic Falcon 9 booster B-1058, a legend with 19 successful flights under its belt, has met an untimely end. In a heart-wrenching announcement by SpaceX, the booster succumbed to high winds and waves, toppling over while returning to port. Just a whisker away from hitting the incredible milestone of 20 flights, its journey concludes prematurely. Now, the baton passes to B-1060, set to carry on the legacy of reusable rockets. This booster soared through 18 prior launches, but newer Falcon boosters boast enhanced landing legs designed to self-level and prevent such mishaps, a testament to SpaceX's continuous drive for innovation and improvement. SpaceX also promises that this tragedy will not happen again in the future. Newer Falcon boosters have upgraded landing legs with the capability to self-level and mitigate this type of issue, the company shared. Absolutely, B-1058 will always hold a special place in SpaceX's journey. With its 19 triumphant launches and landings, it remains an incredible achievement. Its legacy of reliability and remarkable service will forever be honored and remembered in the annals of space exploration. Farewell to a true pioneer. This one reusable rocket booster alone launched to orbit two astronauts and more than 860 satellites, totaling 260 plus metric tons in around three and a half years, SpaceX. SpaceX shared about the B-1058 achievement. For its maiden launch on May 30th of 2020, the rocket propelled NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken into the history books on SpaceX's first mission to send people into orbit. This ended a nine-year gap in America's capability to launch astronauts into low Earth orbit and was the first time a commercial spacecraft achieved this feat. At that time, the rocket was fresh from SpaceX's factory in Southern California, glistening white in color with a bright red NASA worm logo emblazoned on the side. Over the course of its flights to space and back, that white paint has darkened to a charcoal color. Soot from the rocket's exhaust has accumulated bit by bit on the 15-story tall cylinder-shaped booster. The red NASA worm logo is now barely visible. The final launch and landing of B-1058 happened on December 23rd. After taking off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, the Falcon 9's first stage fired its nine kerosene-burning Merlin engines for about two and a half minutes, accelerating the launch vehicle to more than 5,000 miles per hour or 8,000 kilometers per hour for my peeps over the pond. Then, as it had 18 times before, the booster released from the Falcon 9's upper stage, which fired a single engine to power the Starlink satellites into orbit. The Falcon 9 first stage landed on the drone ship just read the instructions about eight and a half minutes into the flight. Two burns of the rocket's second stage will put the 23 second generation Starlink satellites into orbit with deployments occurring about one hour and five minutes after launch. The drone ship then returned the rocket to Cape Canaveral where SpaceX planned to refurbish the vehicle for a 20th flight. Sadly, that is when it met its demise. At that point, B-1058 did lapse offshore south of Cape Canaveral atop the JRTI drone ship. We think that there is no urgency to deliver to the port, presumably to give port crews the day off today for Christmas. As it turns out, this was the first sign of the downfall of B-1058. Now we hope that SpaceX will bring her home, please. SpaceX will then certainly still aim for greater achievements. I see the flight rate can only occur if I can increase reliability so that they're not competing entities, a SpaceX official shared with Ars Technica. The official also said SpaceX might extend the limit on Falcon 9 booster flights beyond 20, the number at which Falcon 9s are currently certified for Starlink missions. The limits are lower for flights with customer payloads. SpaceX eventually wants to retire the Falcon rocket family and the Dragon Crew spacecraft in favor of the huge new Starship rocket, a fully reusable vehicle. But that's not happening until SpaceX can prove Starship can reliably haul payloads and people into space, a prospect that is probably more than a handful of years away. The fully reusable rocket is poised to transform the industry, boasting a substantial payload capacity and the potential for cost-effective launches. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk aims to use the rocket for transporting satellites to Mars, while NASA envisions it as a means to send astronauts to the moon's surface. SpaceX made good but not great progress with the rocket in 2023, but the program, with two launches now in the books, is in full swing. The coming year should bear witness to even more progress and possibly even a trek to low Earth orbit. 
SpaceX's general manager for Starbase, Kathy Leaders, outlined in a presentation given earlier this month that the firm is planning to increase its Starship launch cadence from Texas rapidly. This process will involve SpaceX and the FAA working together on multiple licensing applications simultaneously, according to Ms. Leaders. SpaceX actually right now is working and updating the data and submitting for our Flight 3 and Flight 4 applications, because we have probably before that SpaceX tends to get the rockets ready, and then they are waiting a little bit while we are going through and getting our I's dotted and T's crossed on the licensing app. We've been working really hard with the FAA on kind of getting ahead of it and defining and continuing to find ways that we can maybe be able to do multiple license applications at the same time. But um, to be fair to the FAA, we're a unique one first time uh, commercial space sport, first time, you know, uh, doing experimental flights like this with a huge rocket. So um, we understand that it's going to take us a little while for us to work through this with them. Moving on to other notable news, a Japanese spacecraft just took a huge step toward pulling off the nation's first ever moon landing. Japan's robotic slim moon lander arrived in lunar orbit on Christmas Day, December 25th, as planned. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency announced the spacecraft entered lunar orbit at 2.51 a.m. EDT. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, is pleased to announce that the Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, or SLIM, was successfully inserted into lunar orbit at 1651 on December 25th of 2023. JAXA officials wrote in an update, The spacecraft is in an elliptical orbit that takes 6.4 hours to circle the moon, coming within 600 kilometers of the lunar surface at its closest point and reaching out to 4,000 kilometers at its farthest. The miles Stone keeps Slim on target to attempt a lunar touchdown on January 19th. Success in that endeavor would be historic. To date, only four nations, the Soviet Union, the US, China, and India, have soft landed a craft on the moon. The 2.7 meter Slim launched on September 6th along with XRISM, or XRISM, a powerful X-ray space telescope. Both Japanese spacecraft deployed into Earth orbit and XRISM remains there today. But Slim left our planet gravity well on September 30th, beginning a long, circuitous, and energy-efficient route to the moon. That trek came to an end today when SLIM inserted itself into lunar orbit. The probe will now start gearing up for its touchdown attempt, during which it will try to live up to its moon sniper nickname. SLIM aims to hit its landing zone target with an accuracy of 330 feet or 100 meters or less, paving the way for even more ambitious exploration efforts down the road. SLIM is a mission for researching the pinpoint landing technology necessary for future lunar probes and verifying this on the surface of the moon with a small-scale probe, JAXA officials wrote in a mission description. By creating the slim lander, humans will make a qualitative shift toward being able to land where we want and not just where it's easy to land, as had been the case before, they added. By achieving this, it will become possible to land on planets even more resource-scarce than the moon. If all goes according to plan, and SLIM will also deploy two mini probes onto the lunar surface after touching down. This daughter craft will snap photos, help mission team members monitor SLIM's status, and provide an independent communication system for direct communication with Earth, JAXA officials wrote in the SLIM missions press kit. How might the SLIM lunar lander redefine the landscape of lunar missions, and how might that end up shaping the future of our exploration beyond Earth? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up and Happy New Year!